Welcome to part two of a multi-part series about Perl and Noise in which I eventually am going to build a simulation like this, which kind of looks like a hair, lots of hair or a river or something. Eventually it'll be rainbow colored, but I am talking about Perl and Noise, ultimately how to deal with multi-dimensional Perl and Noise and how to make some interesting pretty graphics from that. So where I last left off, <laughs> previously, previously on Perl and Noise Explained, I was making a mess of this diagram trying to explain how Perl and Noise is calculated over multiple octaves. So what I next need to look at is how do I actually call the noise function in P5JS or processing and get values out of it and make use of those values. So, one thing that is true is if you call the random function, random, you can give it a minimum and a maximum argument, meaning I want a random value between 0 and 50. If you give it just one argument, it'll, give, it'll always assume the minimum is 0. And Anyway, there's a variety of ways we could think about that, but this is probably something, if you're watching this video, that's familiar to you. You might think that's the same thing to do with Perl and noise, right? Okay, so I could get my crazy random values, or I could get my nice smooth random values. And when I want the crazy random values, I want to give a minimum and maximum. When I want the smooth values, I want to get the minimum and maximum. But there's a problem here. Because of the nature of how Perl and noise is calculated, um, you, can't, you can't simply, you need to give it a different argument. And that argument is, uh, in, in my previous discussion, I talked about sort of thinking about Perl and no the, the space of one-dimensional noise almost as a graph along an x-axis, and you can think of the x-axis as time. But we can also now take a moment to just think of this as x, the x-axis. And you'll see this a variable's named in a lot of Perl and noise examples as x off, because what you want to tell P5 or processing or that you're what, what you want to tell those environments is I want the particular Perl and noise value at this position along the x-axis. So let's actually go and do that. Um, so I'm going to go <laughs> look at this. I'm going to go over here, and I'm actually going to just go over to the JavaScript console. There's one that, And I'm going to call, first of all, I'm going to call the random function, just so we can see that. So if I call the random function with no arguments, I get some random value between 0 and 1. If I call it with one argument, I'm going to get the value of between, I'm going to get a random value between 0 and 100. 21. Uh, lucky 21. Now, incidentally, by the way, uh, never mind. I was going to show you that if you give it, let's do this. <laughs> if you give it an array, and I say random A, I will get a random value from that array. Nice to see, right? So let's refresh here. Now, let's call the noise function. Now, I got not a number. So noise cannot be called without an argument. So given my previous discussion, we might say, OK, well, what if I want a noise value between 0 and 100? You might think to do that. OK, I got 0.577. Let me call that again. Hey, I got 0.577 again. Huh? Let me call at 0 .100.01. Look at that. I got a very similar number, but it's a little bit different. See how this number that I'm passing into noise is really like time. It's, it's where am I along this x-axis? What's my offset along this kind of pre-calculated? In truth, it's not, it's not like there's this big array that's already calculated. It's, there's a formula for doing it behind the scenes. But, um, but it's sort of this pre-existing set of values. So if I say I want the noise value at 100, I'm always going to get the very, very same value. Now, you'll also notice here that the number I got was 0.577. Let's try saying, let me get noise at 0. How about noise at 200? Notice the value is always a, a floating point value, and it doesn't seem to be greater than 1. It also seems to be clustering around 0.5. So noise values actually don't have a uniform distribution between, the, by the way, the range is between 0 and 1. They also don't have a uniform distribution. Right? If, you, if I were to say to you, let's look at, um, let's, th let's say I want to pick random values between 0 and 1 over time, and over hours and hours and days and days and days, how, how often do I pick 0.5 versus I pick 0.75 versus I pick 0.05, right? I should get a uniform distribution for pure randomness. That's the nature of randomness. 
With Perl and noise, you'll actually see that the values cluster around the, the mean or the center, 0.5. So the distribution looks more like this, which is like a bell curve or a normal distribution. That's another topic for another day. But sort of interesting to note that or point that out. OK, so there I am. This is what I'm doing. I'm getting those values. So let's now actually make the sketch do something. I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it x. I'm going to set it equal to 0. And actually, I don't know why I'm doing that. First thing I'm going to do is just draw a circle. I'm going to use the ellipse function. And uh, I'm going to just change the size of this to uh, 400 by 400. I'm going to draw the circle at the center of the window and make it like a uh, 24 pixel diameter. And let's just see that I have a circle there. There we go. See this circle here? Let's, whoops, let's make that a little bit bigger. OK, and now I don't know what's there's like some extra nonsense here by accident. Let me get rid of that. Um, OK. There you go. See that circle? There it is. Now, let's make a variable called x and set that equal to 200. There we go. Now, let's do something different. And let's set that x equal to a random width value. Now you can see every moment in time, I'm getting a random value. OK. Now, I want to instead have noise. So let me look at, let me comment this out and say var x equals noise. And then I'm going to say noise at time 100, something random. Well, notice it's over here. No matter what you do, the noise function will always return values between 0 and 1. So one thing that I want to do is take that, the result of that, faction, that function, which goes between 0 and 1, and map it to between 0 and width. In truth, I could just multiply by width, <laughs> because multiplying number between 0 and 1 multiplies it by width, um, gives me a value between 0 and width. So now, if I refresh this, did I not hit save? I didn't hit save. There you go. You can see every time. Now, every time I refresh the page, the sketch creates a new set of Perlin noise values. So even though the values are fixed for that moment, if I say noise 100, I'm always going to get the same value over and over and over again. If I refresh the page, I'm going to get a different same value over and over and over again. Because the Perlin noise space is seeded, and, and P5JS is going to reseed it every time you refresh the sketch. And you can use the noise seed function to fix the seed, but that's, that's a little bit of an aside here. OK, so we're getting something, but the number isn't changing. Why? Because that number is the same all the time. So what I want to do is make this, instead of a fixed value 100, I want to call this something like x offset. I want a variable. What I want to do is I want, I don't have my graph here anymore, but if this is my graph of Perlin noise, I want to move throughout the space. I could move forward or backward. I could move quickly. I could move slowly. I want to get new values every time through draw. So here, all I can do now is say x. I can say x offset here, and I can say x offset plus equals 0.01. So let me do that and refresh this. And you can see now, you can see how it's random, but it's smooth. right? This is now the difference between this. Now you're looking at Perlin noise values over time represented as an x position with compared to random values over time represented as an x position. So see the difference. I'm not looking at that graph anymore. I'm just looking at a single value, but I'm looking at it each moment in time. So hopefully this gives you the idea of uh, Perlin noise, of how Perlin noise works in the core level. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this particular video. And the next video, I'm actually just going to show you how to draw a graph of those values, which might be somewhat useful. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. <laughs> Stay with me, please. <laughs> the, this is an addendum to this particular video, which is that I, I kind of forgot to mention something important, which is I picked this number 0 0.01 somewhat out of a hat. And it really, this number really means something. It was really a vital, crucial number in how the values will behave. So let's look at this sketch again and look at how it's behaving. Let's think about this graph up here that I, I probably has a lot of glare that you can't barely see. But think about how it might be to jump uh, ahead really quickly or to move really slowly. And you can almost think about that as the speed of this thing, right? How quickly are you getting those new values? So for example, if I were to change this to 0 0.001 and refresh the page, you can see it's like moving very, very slowly because it's taking a lot of time to slowly walk through that Perlin noise graph. 
But if I were to change it to 0.1 and hit refresh, you can see it's moving much more quickly. If I were to make that number very large, like really large, if I were to say it's like 100, this is essentially just like randomness now because it's moving so far ahead in that Perlin noise space that that idea of the values being tied to the previous one or the next one is almost lost because you're jumping so far ahead. However, it does look different than random, right? If I go back to this, to random, because you'll notice the random values are getting further along to the edges. That has to do with that sort of uniform distribution of values as opposed to Perlin noise values which tend to cluster around the center. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit more with you in the next video just about one-dimensional Perlin noise before we move on to two-dimensional Perlin noise and looking at how you might make procedural textures of Perlin noise.